Hello everybody from Plant Reviews. Today we speak about uh, one of my favorite orchids and I am uh, particularly proud in this case uh, because uh, it uh, bloomed for the first time i have uh, this plant at home and actually for the first time uh, for the plant as well because as you can see there's uh, no other dry sheets in the plant and as you can see by the size of the pseudo bulbs and the leaves it never flowered before so i'm very happy that uh, for the first time this plant flowered in my house so i can uh, explain uh, what i did in order for this orchid to to bloom well uh, first of all a presentation of uh, the species uh, this is uh, rincolelia digbiana uh, it's not a lelia uh, indeed uh, belongs to its own genus even if it's uh, uh, quite uh, related to lelia uh, Lelia, uh, sorry, Rincolelia is, a, however, a relative of uh, the orchids of the genus Lelia, as well as of Cattleya's epidendrum, uh, but uh, is uh, particularly close to Brassavola. Uh, indeed, it uh, was formerly um, clustered in the same genus as Brassavola digbiana, uh, as well as uh, for some time as uh, Lelia digbiana. However, uh, due to the difference in flower, uh, this species, as well as a very similar species, uh, the um, Brassavo, uh, sorry, the Rincolelia glauca, where uh, they put in their own uh, genus Rincolelia, indeed. Uh, this uh, Rinco is a Greek term for beak, beak and refers. Uh, to a kind of beak-like structure in the anatomy of the flower uh, that separates the ovary from the rest of the flower. Um, I decided not to show it because uh, I don't want to ruin uh, this beautiful flower display. And um, this uh, orchid comes from Central America and is uh, the national flower of Honduras. However, it's found also in Guatemala, Mexico and other parts of uh, uh, Central America. This, like uh, Cattleyas, uh, Lelias, Epidendrum and Savasavolas, is a sympodial orchid, so as you can see, it's spread through pseudobulbs, so can um, get to actually a substantial size. Um, uh, the leaves are uh, um, born on, uh, uh, obviously, are formed on the pseudobulbs, just one uh, leaf. Per pseudobulbs. The pseudobulbs uh, actually are uh, quite thick and as you can see they are club shaped and the sheet, the sh sorry the sheet, <laughs> my pronunciation is entirely is terrible, uh, the sheet is um, uh, tend to um, once uh, gets dry is papery and uh, white. The, uh, as I said, the, the leaves are uh, um, on every, each set of bruise, uh, just one single leaf, and uh, that is very stiff and uh, uh, leathery. And as you can see, is a, is a kind of uh, powder, kind of uh, uh, if you see, yeah, one second, I do uh, first, sorry for the mess in my bedroom. Yeah, do you see the kind this kind of dusty uh, cuticle? Well, this is very typical of Rincolelia digbiana and also of Rincolelia glauca. And uh, usually plants uh, uh, that show this kind of uh, um, leaf uh, tend to um, they are glaucous greyish and uh, this this kind of um, uh, powdery grayish cuticle, they tend to live in very uh, sunny areas. Indeed, actually, Brassavola is uh, one of the orchids that uh, need uh, most sunlight. Um, it is found even growing on cacti. I have uh, read on, I've read on uh, online on some websites. The um, leaves are tend they can grow up to twenty centimeters, so is uh, I would say a medium orchid. Surely it's not a small orchid and uh, uh, can become easily a specimen size. 
Uh, each growth bears one single flower. Uh, due to the fact, actually, that uh, I, uh, the plant uh, was not in flower when I bought it, I bought it from uh, orchidgarden.co.uk. Uh, together with um, uh, some uh, other orchids. Uh, I was wondering uh, if um, three, four months ago when actually the flower sheath started to form, if actually this was Brassavola because uh, as you can see the sheath, sheath is very, for the flower is very long and very green as well and it's long almost as a leaf and it looked to me like a bifoliate uh, at some point. So I were, due to the fact I knew that Rincoleria is only one leaf per pseudo, I was really wondering if there was a misidentification of the orchid, because sometimes, unfortunately, this happened. However, obviously, when I saw the beautiful blooms, I realized that there was uh, no mis mis misunderstanding at all, and was that this was the true species, the Rincoleria di Gibiana. Um, uh, as I said, uh, um, unfortunately, uh, usually if flowers just there is just one flower per um, pseudo bulb. Um, however, sometimes they can get two flowers per pseudo bulb. Even if it's, this is the first time the plant blooms, uh, I am very happy that uh, they started to produce uh, two flowers, uh, one slightly bigger than uh, the other. Uh, talking about uh, the flowers, uh, um, as uh, you can uh, see, is uh, the flower is uh, uh, whitish green. Uh, yeah, I think is uh, yeah you can see it better here. Yeah, uh, petals and sepals are kind of similar, whitish green. Uh, while uh, the lip obviously is usually different, not only from the petals and sepals, but also is actually very different from uh, any uh, other uh, relative uh, like uh, Rincolilia glauca or uh, Cattleyas or uh, Epidendrums uh, because uh, oh, actually there is one Epidendrum that has a fringed uh, lip however uh, the flowers are nowhere as uh, big as uh, Rincolilia uh, digbiana you can see the beautiful uh, frilly lip uh, in uh, this close-up and uh, the lip is uh, whitish, it's whiter than the petals, however the throat of, uh, the, of the lip is bright green. The um, orchid blooms uh, usually between December and August, um, however uh, it uh, mostly blooms uh, yeah, in spring and summer, I have uh, read. The flower can be up to 17, uh, 18 centimeters, so about 7 inches. However, one second, I have a caliber. Uh, this obviously is a, uh, the first, is a first blooming uh, um, uh, specimen, so the flower are not as big. They are about uh, uh, 12, 13 centimeters, I would say, yeah. Yeah, about two, yeah. Yeah, about 12 centimeters, yeah. The, um, um, uh, the flower is, uh, in addition to be of a very beautiful shape, uh, is also uh, fragrant, uh, mostly at uh, night. I can detect actually a little bit of smell also during the day. However, is, uh, the fragrance is definitely uh, stronger in the evening and uh, at night. I've read that uh, uh, sometimes in Colelia uh, stop actually being fragrant uh, at night if you switch the light on, but uh, to me it never occurred. And as I said, it's slightly fragrant even uh, now during the daylight. However, I also read that uh, um, this orchid can fill a room for its fragrance. Sometimes uh, uh, orchids that bloom for the first time are uh, uh, are not as fragrant as uh, uh, orchids that uh, uh, bloomed uh, several other times, uh, obviously that are bigger, as well as don't produce uh, flowers that um, um, usually, I mean, first blooming uh, specimens produce flowers that are a little bit smaller than uh, 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 fully adult plants. However, uh, the um, uh, fragrance I 
uh, can detect at night is uh, definitely lemony, uh, very lemony, and but uh, is uh, not overpowering at all. Uh, actually, I can detect it only if I am uh, quite close to the plant. However, uh, this, as I said, might be just because the plant is, the f is a first time bloomer, so possibly next time it will be much stronger, hopefully, because the fragrance is actually very nice, even if uh, I was uh, hoping would have been uh, more, um, would have been sweeter, instead it's a kind of very sharp uh, lemon uh, fragrance, however it's still uh, a nice uh, fragrance, though, definitely. Uh, about the cultivation, the uh, plant uh, I grow, as uh, many other plants I grow at the moment, especially orchids, is in uh, semi-hydro, so in Leica, and as you can see, the about 3-4 uh, uh, centimeters of uh, water, uh, it's a little bit dirty of algae actually, I have to clean the, the container. Uh, however, I like to mm, have uh, uh, transparent plastic pots so I can actually see the roots, uh, how the roots behave, and this is especially important when you cultivate uh, the orchids in uh, Leica because uh, sometimes uh, um, orchid roots do not uh, really adapt uh, very well to Leica, so they tend to, uh, they can rot. Some other times the Leica doesn't allow uh, an even uh, humidity uh, perfusion throughout uh, the compost, so sometimes uh, the roots just dry up and uh, basically the orchids get dehydrated and uh, die. Unfortunately I lost several orchids uh, that I try to adapt to Leica, either for dehydration or for rotting. So really um, I wouldn't uh, uh, try anymore to adapt uh, orchids in Leica unless uh, I am uh, very sure. So far the best compost I have uh, used for orchids is actually, I mean for Catraia orchids and the relatives like Rincolelia is actually bark. Indeed they have uh, Rincolelia glauca that I realized I was uh, getting completely dehydrated and the new roots just uh, uh, burnt burned because of the lake, uh, the lake basically didn't absorb enough water on the surface so I decided to put it actually in sphagnum moss because it allows a more uh, water uh, perfusion and actually is now uh, doing well is uh, downstairs in a fresher environment so and a bit more humid. Talking about humidity, Rincolelia digbiana is about 40-60% uh, uh, humidity uh, and the temperature, we can live in intermediate greenhouses, I found, but uh, I have uh, grown this uh, uh, species uh, in, uh, on basically, well, on this windowsill. You can actually see my paper, try not to forget anything uh, about uh, what I want to talk about uh, Rincolelia. So this uh, windowsill is uh, uh, southern uh, exposed. Uh, this plant, uh, I just moved it uh, a little bit uh, um, on this uh, shelf just uh, for the flowering because uh, it was just next to the glass of the windowsill and obviously the flower would have hit the glass if uh, I would have left the plant there. As you can see, the uh, flower stem is actually quite long in comparison to the leaf and uh, obviously they couldn't have opened if there, if there was the glass in front of them. The, um, another, um, in addition to lake anyway, uh, before uh, converting the orchid in lake uh, I was growing it in just bark and was doing perfectly fine. Um, I changed to semi-hydro because um, I read and also on YouTube I found lots of videos saying that uh, orchids were doing better in semi-hydro and uh, where uh, it's actually yes, easier to repot the plant because you don't have to waste uh, um, like a pebbles like you do need to waste bark or sphagnum moss because uh, they can't be reused. However, as I said, it's a bit risky, so I'm happy that this beautiful plant didn't have any problems in converting to Leica, but some others, as I said, had many problems. Another um, 
way you can uh, cultivate this plant is uh, on um, uh, fern and on cork. Uh, many people had uh, uh, lots of success uh, using these substrates. However, remember that uh, uh, in this case they need to be uh, watered a bit uh, more because uh, uh, cork and fern, if it's um, uh, if uh, uh, they are basically on uh, cork or fern. They these substrates don't tend to hold much water, so it's very important during the active growth of the orchid to water them uh, quite often. And I found that they need also a dry period of rest um, after the active growth and blooming of the plant. Me. I am growing uh, this plant, as I said, in semi-hydro all year round, so I always keep uh, the pot in the pot about 3-4 centimeters, uh, and uh, so I would say about one fourth to one third of uh, um, water, I use arrow water as recommended by Miss Orchid Girl, and actually I found that uh, this is the best water for the orchids and uh, I use a slight fertilizer um, about uh, once every two weeks um, and the plant is doing uh, great in uh, this period. Possibly if it were the greenhouse it would have bloomed uh, earlier however I'm very happy I bought this plant in October 2016 and now it's March 2020 and it's just uh, bloomed with two beautiful flowers in uh, just uh, being on a windowsill in the UK. Talking about uh, actually uh, illumination required, like the requirements, uh, uh, I found that this plant need a lot of light, uh, much, much more than any other orchid I own. Um, some other orchids uh, that were on this uh, windowsill together with the Rincolelia, at some point uh, had some burns, so I had to uh, move them in an eastern or northern facing uh, window, actually you can, sorry, yeah, you can see one here and yeah, another one with a burnt leaf here. Uh, now it's March, so they are still okay uh, to be in like full sun. However, uh, in uh, um, starting from uh, late April, I will move them to a more appropriate uh, place with less light. The, um, uh, about uh, uh, the um, another peculiarity of this flower is uh, that uh, as I said uh, they are night fragrant because they are believed to be pollinated by moths as some other orchids such as uh, uh, Angraecum and uh, moth orchids uh, well for Angraecum actually it's uh, already um, proven that uh, they are pollinated by moths as well as the ghost orchids um, the use of the, the species in uh, hybridization is uh, um, uh, quite uh, often done due to the beautiful frilled lip that uh, obviously is a characteristic that is highly desirable to give many hybrids this uh, exotic uh, look to the flowers uh, and uh, also for the color uh, that is uh, uh, lime green many people like uh, to have uh, flowers that are green me i'm more of a fan of uh, orange and uh, red uh, flowers even if uh, i absolutely love also the bright uh, pink uh, purple and lavender of uh, many orchids um, however, uh, the, um, luckily the frilled lip is a character that is quite dominant when you hybridize uh, these uh, cat, uh, sorry, these uh, uh, orchid with uh, other uh, uh, with other uh, members of the Leiline, uh, while the hybrids usually uh, gets most of its color uh, from the other parent. Um, I found anyway that um, many uh, first-generation hybrids of Rincolelia digbiana 
uh, show a kind of paler color than uh, the other parent, uh, probably due to the fact that uh, still the green and white uh, um, of uh, the Rincolele di Biana, uh, even if uh, not dominant, they kind of uh, dilute the color of uh, the other parent. Um, some uh, of the um, um, so, so about uh, yeah about the just uh, another um, uh, just another note about the light. As I said, uh, I live in the UK, so even a southern exposed window sill in UK is a different latitude than if I had a southern exposed window sill at uh, the. Um, at the tropics and in Italy it might be different. However, I know that uh, even in uh, um, Italy uh, there is uh, another person uh, and I put it a link on uh, the page that uh, cultivated this uh, plant uh, in full sun in, uh, in Italy, in Sardinia, so in a much brighter light than I can have it in UK. And uh, he also was able through this way to get the, pl the plant uh, blooming uh, for the first time. As you can see on my plants, it is the only plants that uh, can that I leave on the windowsill, uh, southern exposed in UK all year round, and it never showed any burn. So um, uh, if you are looking for a, an easy orchid to keep, uh, a bit unusual. Uh, because of these uh, very peculiar flowers, uh, beautifully fragrant, especially at night, so it, it's great in your bedroom. And uh, there is um, not uh, very common, actually, I've never found it in any shop, but actually it's not rare online. I would definitely recommend the Rincolelia Digbiana as your next step or chase uh, for your orchid collection. Thank you very much and uh, see you at the next uh, video. Bye.